Yeah. All right, at 6 o'clock, we'd like to bring this meeting to order. Are we on? Yes, we're on, sir. Okay, we have a um, combination finance committee select board meeting here in the town of Wakeley. And for t tonight, we will be reviewing and discussing and having presentations by both Frontier Regional and Wakeley Elementary Schools, as well as Public Health. I'll ask Mr. Modesto, are you staying for the Waitley meeting? Or are you just coming in for Frontier and going? Because if so, we'll bring Frontier first. Do you want to ask first. me if we wanted to go first and then he can? <laughs> oh, he's a very busy man. Um, elementary, no, I mean, you're both, yeah. So you're going to hear from both? Well, okay, good. Um, what, what's that? Yeah, the animal's going to do that. No, no, I'm, we're not there yet. All right, okay, we're going to go in. Um, Everybody read oh, the minutes yeah. from last week. I'm going to whisper in your okay. Okay. Yes. 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 Motion to accept the minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So we're good for the minutes from last week. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. That's good. Okay. So first up tonight, we will have Waitley Elementary School. And representing the Waitley Elementary School will be the principal of the Waitley Elementary School. Anyone else? Yeah, so, I don't know if everybody's met. This is Shelly Pareda, new business director. Shelly, how you doing? Do we have the camera on Shelly so that everybody at home understands? They can take a minute, please. Very excellent. Um, Shelly, I'm Paul Antea. Guys, let's go, let's go around and introduce <coughs> ourselves so that both at home and Shelly. Dan, Dan Kennedy, Finance and CBI. Jim, Jim Kirkendall, Finance Committee. Pop Fighting Cabinet Finance. Paul Antea, Finance. Joyce Palmer, Fortune, Select Board, and Liaison for the Schools. Jonathan Edwards, Select Board. Fred Barron, Finance Committee. Brian Dominic, Town Administrator. <coughs> Administrative Assistant, Amy. All right, very good. We are here. Okay. Um, Chrissy, do you want to do it from there or do you want to come up to the chair? Whatever. Which, which way are you How's the camera? Is it better if you see it? Yeah. It'll be easier it's, to hear. It'll be easier to hear. Yeah. From an auditory perspective <laughs> these days, it might be better if you're closer. So. Yeah. All right. So. Shelly, kind of give you an overview. So you should have received several weeks ago the uh, the weekly budget. That budget has not changed since the <coughs> initial, um, so it's kind of a tentative vote to move forward by the school committee. Um, and Shelly can take you through the specifics of it. And while you have a long narrative that goes through it, I'm already speaking for you, I'll stop. But um, <laughs> uh, she can go through the highlights of it and maybe have questions throughout it. Um, uh, so we are proposing a 2.51% increase for Waitley Elementary School next year, which comes out to $44,827. Uh, total town <coughs> appropriation for the general fund of uh, $1,830,013. Um, so I did send around a narrative. I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing unless you prefer that I do that, but I thought that I would just highlight a few points here. That's good. Um, so principals, department heads, um, administration provided input on the budget building process. Um, the needs and the wants of the staff and the students were taken into consideration. We also looked at a three-year history of expenditures and made reductions or increases based on the three-year spending history. And then uh, also took into consideration any wage increases that might be coming up in the next year for all staff across the board, central office, administrative, um, anyone on a union contract, custodians, um, all staff are included here for increases. Um, so while the increase is 2.51%, I think it's important to point out that the majority of that is salaries and wages. There is a very minor increase, approximately 0.13%, uh, 
um, to the expenditures not related to salaries, and that is because we did make some reductions in some expenditures in order to offset the increases that we had put in place. Um, some items to note particularly about salaries is that there, the contract is not settled for Union 38 for next school year or next fiscal year. Um, so we have a placeholder in here. So the benchmark right now is looking at 3.85%, which includes the cost of living adjustment and any step increases or column movements for our teachers next year. So that would be for the salary, 3.85? 3.85, right. So it doesn't all hit the general fund, however, which is a little bit confusing when you're looking at the numbers um, in that regard, because some of our teachers are funded from other funding sources. So it doesn't all directly translate to what the town has to pay for the percentage increase. Um, at the IA contract is settled and their wages will increase 3.58%. Again, that doesn't all hit the general fund. They are funded from other funding sources that the school has, such as school choice, um, grants, or early childhood revenue. And then we do have wage increases, as I mentioned, for anyone else who's on staff and in central office for non I'm happy to take questions if you have okay. them. Do we have any questions on what was presented or what you see in front of you? Um, what's our enrollment right now at Wake? 127. And what's the ratio of resident versus school choice? That's still around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But still roughly a third. Yeah. Three um, years. Just um, as I was going through the budget, um, looking at things, um, <coughs> are you happy with the budget? Is this where I ask for extra stuff? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I'm sure you recall that last year when we sat down to this, we, things were a little, a little trickier. Um, very gracious in giving us a um, great budget for this year and uh, we seem to be in, in good shape right now the, the budget does represent uh, what, what we need and a lot of what we want uh, which is a great place to be um, would you agree or not agree with the fact that the most important um, relationship or activity within a school especially in elementary school is that between the teacher and the children <clears throat> in a confined classroom? Teacher and IA. Mm -hmm. Right? Children. Teachers. So when I look at the budget, the total budget is two million, what? Two million two hundred eleven thousand six hundred and yeah. fifty dollars. When I look at um, the budget for for textbooks, it's five thousand dollars. When I look at for classroom supplies, it's 15. So out of $2 million, $20,000, now we understand everything else around it, the heat, the electric, you know, keeping the building up, all that stuff. But <clears throat> that just seems like an, an unnatural ratio. You know, $20,000 out of $2 million, goes directly into the tools of a classroom. So I don't know if you can speak to that. So do you want me to spend less on the heat or more on the supplies? <laughs> no, but I, I mean, it's something that it kind of jumps out at you a little bit. Are there other things that if I ask teachers, you know, what would be on your wish list? I'm sure there are other things that, that they would say, but we're, we're very well appointed. Our technology is kept up to date. We have a technology director who really has a good eye on sort of long term and keeping things in a cycle so we don't end up having to replace everything all at once. Um, if we had a big technology need, you might see a bump in the need for uh, supplies. Uh, as far as textbooks, there's, there's not a whole lot of textbook use with this on. Um, as, in terms of the reading program, we have literacy closets with individual um, book collections that the teachers use based on each student's level. So that, you know, it's not not quite like it was when I went to school. Possibly when 
when you went to school. I don't, I don't want to guess when you went to school, but. Um, Please don't. So it's not unusual to see a low number in the, the textbooks. Okay. We've got a question from Mrs. Edwards. Oh, no, I just want to make a comment. Is a that comment? We, al we also have a very generous PTO that contributes a lot of money for materials in the classrooms and supplies. So okay. Whitley students do not need to spend any money on supplies. Um, but a lot of the research does show that the teachers and the leadership in the school are the most important place to put your resources in terms of learning and having a high quality school. So I think that's at least how I've been thinking about it as we've been moving forward. And this year with the teachers and negotiations, it's really important that we continue to support them going forward. I'd like to make two comments. Yeah. For me, it would be helpful to see what it costs to run the school between other sources of revenue that you, that you referenced that is reflected here in say teacher salaries, um, the PTO contributions, just so we know what the, what the total nut is. Because we don't, we, based upon this, we don't know what it costs to run the school, we just know what it costs our taxpayers to help finance the operations of the school. So it would be helpful to know, to know that in aggregate. So this does give you an idea of what the, the two million two hundred eleven thousand six fifty. That's the total. That's the total. There but may the, be some other small the funds. But that's not significant. No. Okay. And there might be some other grants that we pick up here or there. But this is basically the majority. It includes of the SPED. What 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 at federal dollars? Yes. Okay. And it yeah. includes things that are paid for out of school choice. Correct. Okay. Then then the other comment and. Chrissy, you and I have talked about this a lot. The gym and floor? What's that? The gym floor? No, <laughs> but it, it's the best gym floor in the region now. Um, and it sort of follows with what I think what Paul was trying to get at. <coughs> the budget, you guys do a great job managing your budget, but I, I, we're in the age of school competition. We're in the age of competition for who wants to live in what communities. And I think we need to see if we can get to the moon. Why don't we have a gifted and talented program at Whaley Elementary School? Yeah. And I don't want, and I heard 10 years ago it was because we can't have one at every school, so if we can't have one at every school, we're not gonna have one at just that school. And I, I, didn't, I didn't want to hear that response because that's silly. But My thinking on that is that I would prefer for us to be really in tune to what every kid needs and make sure we're, we're hitting them at their level, regardless of whether they're Gifted and talented or See, I'm worried that we'll lose the real gifted, or we do lose the real gifted and talented students because we don't meet their needs. And again, if we're in the age of school competition, if, if people from outside the district see, oh my goodness, Wade Elementary School has a gifted and talented program. I believe, whether they're right or not is another issue, I believe my son or daughter is gifted and talented and the testing that goes, goes on will either demonstrate that or not. But Waitley is where I want to live. Waitley is where I want to send my child if I live in I don't care what town. And we spend, as rightfully so, we spend a lot of good money on the people who have needs, who have significant needs. And we spend a lot of money on the people who are in the meet. But we don't do the same singular focus on the people who are truly exceptional students. And I think we should. Because again, it is a it's a draw, and it's something that we should proudly say. Yeah, we address the needs not just in totality, but individually, and we have special special programs for gifted and talented, just like we have special programs for people who, who need additional assistance. That's the kind of thing that I would love to go to the floor of town meeting and say, we need this additional hundred thousand dollars because this is what it's going to take to make Whaley not just the best school in Franklin County, but the best school in Western Massachusetts or the best school in, in the entire state, and we, and we don't have it. Right? So I, I want you to try to go to the moon. Well, in case you missed the article, we were one of six. I, I understand that. One of 67 schools of recognition in the state of Massachusetts based on the improvements we made from two years ago to last year. Which we all know can happen <laughs> because one student either was absent or present on that day. It, it we all understand the law of small numbers with 20 people per class, one student is 6%. So to me, the award is not that. I'm glad we got it, well, but I mean, it's not that of, meaningful. You know, when, when people come looking for a school choice school or whether or not they want to keep their child in yeah. or not, it's kind of a big 
Right, but we, mm -hmm. yeah, but we also talk to people who are not impressed necessarily by that. But that's... And, and again, that, that's a separate issue that I'm talking about. I, I, I just don't understand why, rather than just have, pulling everybody together, we can, we can have special programs to really address the special needs of gifted and talented students, the unique needs of the gifted and talented program. And that's a function of the budget. And it's not, I'm not blaming, I'm just saying, wouldn't it be wonderful if, and, that's, and maybe it's an educational philosophy, I don't know. <laughs> and we're not supposed to be arguing educational philosophy here. We're supposed Maybe to be arguing everybody you have is gifted and talented right now. You just don't know it. Yeah. I think, I think another okay. issue is our size. I mean, I couldn't create a gifted and talented sixth grade class because I only have. Building. Right, but you could create a gifted and talented project or program for a couple of the twenty, perhaps, and give them just make it. I, you know, again, I'm not an educator. I just, rather than saying why we can't, say why, why here's how we can. Well, I just want to make sure that the, the principal mentor, Chris mentions the genius hour and the um, compute, the robot programming, that they are trying to bring programs that go across the grades that really enhance the experience for all the students, but I think would appeal to those students that are particularly motivated um, or you know, more uh, intellectually oriented. So, the, you know, this is our first year, we're with, or first full year that sure. we've been with these the leaders, Darius and Chrissy. So it's gonna take some time to get things more organized. The other good news I wanna make sure we don't lose is preschool. The preschool, which remember we came and asked for full funding for a full day, is really doing very well and is very robust and we have waiting list of like 18 kids that want to get into the preschools. So yeah. our idea was that the pipeline, that pipeline would hopefully create some more students. Now, Waitley's also having a baby boom apparently in two years or something, we have a full kindergarten of kids. So, um, so we're bracing ourselves for some of that and trying to also address, um, you know, get ready for those and make sure that we try and keep as many of those residents as possible. Well, um Generally speaking, you're happy with the budget. If this is your first full year, um, and everything's well? Yes. It's all good. Okay, I just want to make one comment. This is observational only. And it's going to bring a smirk to many faces. But I've been going around to many of the gymnasiums in our greater area, watching my granddaughter and friends play basketball in different places. Nearly every gym I go to has a climbing wall. We don't have one. Frontier doesn't have one. So I'm wondering why does nearly everybody else have a climbing wall and we don't? It's, it's, as long as I've been there, it has not been a request. So the gym teacher doesn't request it. <coughs> that the gym teacher doesn't want to be bothered with creating a curriculum around. No, I don't, I don't think that's, that's okay. it. The gym teacher is pretty, pretty yeah. on top of things and pretty serious so, about it. But they've never brought it up, like wanted it in the budget. And I, I guess the same thing for Frontier. They, that's never popped up as a need or want. Right. I mean, so when you put a climbing wall in, and then you got to put in protections that kids don't climb the wall when you're not paying attention to kids climbing the wall. Absolutely. You know, um, Deerfield has a, not really a climbing wall, they have a, uh, I guess a lateral wall. You go, you step up two feet off the ground and you go this way instead of going up. Yeah. Um, it all, you know, it depends on the curriculum you're teaching and whether or not you want to do a two-week unit on the climbing wall, you know, and take up a portion of your gym wall space to do so. You know, the, the, uh, sure. the, the high walls with the, you know, with the carabiners and all the other ropes and all that kind of safety, you're going to use one hour out of the year for your maybe your fifth and sixth grade class. If that happened, we're going to want to go up that high, you know, that kind of thing. It's you know, they do, um, you know, they do other kind of things and trips that have, um, you know, that have climbing and that kind of stuff. So it's an observational you know, thing. It just kind of struck me as I went to these other gyms and so so okay. Um, any further questions for Waitley Elementary School? Just a quick one. It's a small item. Maintenance of grounds 
increased by 1,500 to replenish the playground and ships annually. If we replace it annually, why is it 1,500 more this year? There, it, it wasn't in the budget prior oh, to this. There was nothing and, in the budget. And we actually had gone longer than it should have been let go without the witches. And funds were moved from other line items to pay for it, so it's, it has been being done. Just we wanted to get in the right spot and make sure that the money was built in. So we feel comfortable with building maintenance budget that's in here? Okay. Can I ask a question? Yep. What's the uh, health of uh, our school choice account? Last year the conversation was around how we sort of we're spending it as we're getting it. We're not a year in arrears. So what's the status of that? And, that's, and I think that's an excellent question because Thank that you. is the big difference between last year and this year and where last year we were looking for more money um, because of the school choice account was not healthy. And Shelly's going to explain that multiple factors happened to put it in a healthy spot outside of being able to pull things off of it last year that were funded by the local taxpayer. Um, so going into uh, the FY20 budget that you all approved last year, we were looking at a um, very minor, I think a $30,000 or $38,000 rollover. Um, that changed pretty dramatically due to some changes in FY19. So the revenue was up by $27,000 over what the budget for 19 was approved at. Um, and that was based because it, you're in a little bit of a lag because it's from the prior October <coughs> enrollment. So enrollment for school choice was better last year. So the revenue increased. Um, and then my understanding is that there was some tightening up of expenditures and we were able to reclass almost $85,000 back into school choice and fund from the local budget. Um, so those two pieces, you know, you're looking at over $100,000 that allowed us to build that account back up. Um, so the rollover uh, going into FY21, we're looking at just over 200,000 going into FY21. And we will use, um, we, we are working in arrears at this point. So in FY20, um, we're anticipated to bring in about 255,000 and the spending is at 260, I'm sorry, 100, um, sorry, 262,000. Um, so we are spending in FY21, FY20's revenue. So hopefully we'll be able to maintain that pattern moving forward. Okay, so the accounts come back a little bit. Yeah. We're looking at having going into FY22, so the end of next year, about 170,000 in school choice. Mm -hmm. And do I understand the impact, right? If we have a full kindergarten class, that's going to be declining school choice revenue. In the fall of, look ahead. in the fall of 2021, there will be 19 weekly children eligible, based on the census, eligible to come to kindergarten. Whether they will all come at that time um, mm -hmm. is something we won't know for a while but um, as opposed to to the the incoming kindergarten class there are nine Waitley residents and that was the same as our current kindergarten class so that's a pretty big jump from nine to nineteen right and there are you know I am aware that that means there's not school choice that year we don't know if for we kindergarten have, we don't know beyond that though we don't have that do we have any estimates for the year after is that a bumper trend yeah. And we might not have complete data, but incomplete data is better than So no. basically, how I many two year olds are out there? <laughs> yeah. out there right? I guess we could. You, you we should have that right. Yeah. 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 And then we could check the time process, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's the best we can do. But I guess the point is, is that if it is a trend, then school choice revenue is going to decline. Yeah. Will, right. will decrease, and that's and that's the importance too. The the idea, the practice of spending a year in rear, I think, is the, the strongest fiscal thing to do, um, because you're able to adjust with any ups and downs. Where that's where we weren't last year, and where we were ending at thirty five thousand. We said you lose, you lose a couple of kids, you lose a sped increment. Their sped increments up to forty thousand dollars. You lose one, you know, one student who receives those services. All of a sudden, you're cutting your budget on September first, and so that's why it's important to be having that kind of buffer. The, the school choice is a, is a tough game in that way where you have such volatility, especially in a small school. Do we happen to know, um, say even for just last year, how much, how many dollars per pupil do we get from the state for a Waitley student? 
versus how much we get from the state for a school choice student. I know the second number is $5,000. It hasn't changed since my kids were in school. So that is a long time. Yeah. Um, but also at the very start of school choice, we were only get we were only getting something like between one thousand and two thousand dollars per Waitley resident. So we were actually making money on school choice kids. I don't know I'm, if what the number is now, how much we get from the state per people, but do we have any estimate of that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I can pull chapter seventy oh. workbook too and, and just double check. But I, I have a summary here, but oh, okay. I just need to verify that it's accurate before I shoot. I mean, our per people costs will always be higher. But it was really stark back in the early 2000s and the late 90s. Okay. That would be good to know, Monica, if it is a trend, how, how bad is the differential between what we get? While she's looking at that. Uh, I can't get on the, um, oh, get it yeah. wants yeah. to connect to Frontier right now, so I can't uh, Well, it's good to know. Can you send me that? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's a conversation piece for our electric officials. So. Yeah, the, I can, um, I'll send you the link, too, to get to the Chapter 70 workbook. Okay. And can kind of talk through some so of that with you. saying that we have to spend almost 13000 per student, but they don't right. give us that as aid, obviously. Right. But if they're giving us 267 for two-thirds of the children, and they're giving us 260 for one-third of the children. 3300 Yeah. So the differential is somewhere. We're still getting more money for a school choice child yeah. than we are for. And then when we lose, then proportionally more money when a child uh, decides the school choice out of Whitley, which is I think where, you know, having our school out a little, I don't know. I don't think ambition is necessarily the right word, but maybe some, you know, some ambition to be, like, really um, a center place where people really want to send their kids, and they don't even think about going to other districts. And then sending out for this FY20 yeah. that we're in is down compared mm -hmm. to FY19, so what that's a that positive. Happen? Sending out total total students. Um, there was there's five in FY20 right across now. the K6 or pre K6. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. It was two that's previous year. Pretty good. Yeah, that's very good. Um, just um, regarding spend, it is when you look through the budget, spend costs are infiltrated throughout, so it's never in one spot. So you can look and say. That's the spend cost. Do you have that? Do you know what um, that is? I don't have it. I, I could look at it more, but you're right. It all is dispersed because it goes by the function code that Desi sets up. It's not right. general ed versus special ed. So right. I'd have to do some manipulating of the numbers. But Does anybody follow do. that over, over time? How sped costs have? I don't know if anyone has historically. I yeah. haven't yet dove okay. into it in my first yeah. uh, how long have been here? Seven months. <laughs> um, but it's something that we should be looking at. So if we look at expenditures on sped students versus uh, customary, usual customary student, how long we want to turn And it's a little bit tricky. I don't think it's a complete black and white because yeah. some of our instructional assistants, they may support the special needs students, but they're sure. also in a regular ed classroom. They're not in a special ed program. So, um, and especially in early childhood, they could all be classified as special ed instruction, but there's also typically developing kids in that class, so it's a little bit gray. <coughs> Alrighty, so we'll uh, wrap Waitley Elementary School up. Any final thoughts, questions, comments? Thank you very much. Appreciate budget hearing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Budget hearing. March School committee 4th. budget hearing. March March. Next week. March fourth. Yep. You're all invited. I got in the camera. I know, but they meet it on Tuesdays, which is the only day I can't go. It's on Wednesday. It's on Wednesday, Wednesday night. night, isn't it? Wednesday night. Wednesday, Wednesday night. Wednesday night. They called me. We may change the time, but it's either five or six.
Oh, well, that's okay. No, we can't. We can't. Yeah, because no, a public safe. hearing has been posted in the paper two weeks prior to the event. So we missed that. Okay, so it's 6 p.m. on March 4th. You can have other business prior if you want and then have a public hearing. Oh. You know, if you want. Do yeah. that. We can repost that to anybody have a hearing at that time. Okay, we will now move to Frontier Regional School District budget. It's looking like the uh, for total Frontier Regional School budget is coming in at twelve million five hundred fifteen thousand dollars, four hundred five hundred fifteen thousand four hundred forty dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, you say with a two point eight four percent increase. Um, go ahead. Yeah, that that's exactly right. Um, so similar circumstances as uh, Waitley Elementary. Um, you point out the numbers perfectly. So the. Uh, general fund is primarily what we'll, we'll give a little bit of a summary of. So the total general fund budget, um, 11792437 um, So that's what the assessment to the towns is built on is the general fund budget, but we obviously have other funding sources at Frontier as well. Um, took in, again, same feedback from principals, department heads, administrators to make sure that the needs and wants were being met. Uh, included wage and salary increases for all personnel. Um, and then we also have the addition of some staffing being added at Frontier. There is uh, an English teacher being added, a full-time English teacher, and a full-time um, board certified behavior analyst, uh, BCBA, which helps with special education students. Um, and it appears on the general fund that there's another half of a position built in. Um, it's not a new position. It is an employee who is employed at the school, but she was previously fully funded from a revolving fund, and that fund is losing some revenue next year. So we're shifting half and half to move that on. Um, so that was a, a good part of Frontier's increase. Um, we did make some significant changes in uh, IAs based on needs of the students, which allowed us to reduce the budget by about 80,000, and then our auto district placements are down next year, 55,000 as well. So we were able to offset those salary increases and some of the other expenditure changes that we needed to make. Um, the uh, health insurance remained the same, so that was a positive note for us, but the retirement funds increased due to a change in the assessment from Franklin Regional Retirement, so we're up 41,000 there. Um, and then we do have some separation costs for Frontier next year that um, will increase the budget as well. So as you stated, we're looking at a 2.84% increase for Frontier's general fund. Okay. Um, questions, thoughts, comments about the budget? What's driving the need for the English teacher? Class sizes. We reduced two English teachers over the last probably eight years um, through two retirements, and then we had a special ed teacher covering uh, the instruction of some English classes and then those numbers. Our numbers actually got down to almost around 600 and now we're back up around 650. So with that and um, no longer having that special ed teacher teaching English class, there's a full schedule to English teachers. Is it a middle school or a high school? Yes, sir. <coughs> wow. So you said you have a total enrollment of 650? Oh, I can give you exact. I can give it through an estimate. <coughs> <laughs> October 1 report puts us at 647. 647. Six, 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 across six grades. Across six, 7 through 12. Or 13, because we have special needs students that go to 22. And okay. <coughs> there's 477 from the four towns in those schools. In those two schools. Okay. Um, That ratio of choice to pretty consistent with weight of choice to, to residents. 27% choice. Um, is there a reason why the uh, numbers on the like this 10119 enrollment and then it goes back over the years? That one says 477 for the enrollment in 2020. That's enrollment. That's not choice. That's not choice. Oh, okay. Oh, so that's from the tens. Okay, got it. 
So you guys can predict this question, I guess. What's the, are the class sizes for your AP and honors classes different than the class sizes for mainstream? Depends on the class. <coughs> Is there a range? I mean, we can have an AP calculus class that has high 20s in it, and then we could have an AP computer science class that has a dozen. And has there been an analysis done of the, the, the ratio of choice versus four town residents in those classes as opposed to other classes? No. Now understand that the majority of our choice students come from our elementary schools. So we're not getting a large bump of increase starting in middle and high school. We get between three to five, between oh, good year, now. seven, in, maybe in seventh grade, and then in ninth grade, you're talking maybe five oh, in a year. Um, so the majority of those students are coming all the way through. So they're a product of our system. Do we lose many from sixth to seventh? Or from eighth to nine? We lose in both places. So we lose from six to seven. We will lose. Um, we lose up to fifteen. So um, we our class sizes range. You know, we, we usually take in a class. It comes in at about the size of one thirty-five. Is the cost coming in? And we usually get about one twenty. And the majority of those are private schools. In middle school, not other districts, but private other districts. And then the same, the same ratio for eighth to nine. And then eighth to ninth, we lose tech. And so again, so now right. you're at 120, and then we'll lose about 15 to tech, and then another five to private. There's an occasional charter. There's an occasional, um, there's an occasional choice out. Usually, the people are kind of set by that by, by that number. So then, our normal, our average class is around 100 to 105 in high school. And so where do you see the enrollment going moving forward? throughout the county too. So right now, the current sixth grade coming, so this is now we're talking about for Frontier now. So the current sixth grade is a healthy size class. The, next, the fifth grade after that is not a healthy size class. It drops a good, um, I can actually have the numbers in front of me. Um, it drops from 131 to 107. And then there's a 108, and then it starts to go back up again. So there is a, there's no way to do, deal with it. It's going to dip down a little, but it's not going to. And that size class, okay. well, it, it, I'm concerned about it. Long, it's not this fiscal year, this budget, but two years out, we're going to have to make some staff changes because there's going to be, um, if, you, if we lose, if we lose percentage-wise, you lose another 10, now you're under 100, that's a class section. And so we've already started splitting teachers more than ever was done five, 10 years ago. Um, teaching some classes in the high school, some classes in the middle school. It used to be full team. There was no breaking out of that. We started breaking out of that because we went from three teams to two teams. We kind of got big again. We're just, you almost needed 2.5 teams. So we started having some teachers teach at both ends of the building. Um, for um, classes, you know, because of special needs, some classes are gonna run, are gonna run larger. Like a social studies class, you're gonna have more inclusion than you're going to have in a math class. So you're gonna need different sections additional supports for those with special needs. So anyways, we, we're, we're moving, shifting staff around. We're going to probably have to shift staff around in that in order to um, not have classes. So does it make sense to create really a comprehensive marketing strategy on school choice going 8-9, or 6-7 and then 8-9, but especially 8-9, so that we can draw more more students in that we, we know we're going to lose them from residents. Mm -hmm. So. Now is the I mean, creating the marketing strategy isn't isn't for the summer before the fall. It's for two years out. So you right. really have an understanding of, of what you're going to do to build up your your brand. <clears throat> build. I'm just wondering if, yeah, if mean, that's some of the choices. I mean, school choice is a tricky thing in Franklin County because you know, in the sense that there's only so many kids. A, there's only so many kids. And Frontier is fortunate that we're one of the few schools that's not shrinking and shrinking it not only shrinking in our local population, but shrinking in having to pay school choice out to us. So if you you know go up to north to some of the other districts, they, they would probably say, you're meeting with this curse next to it because they're paying us to educate their kids. Right. And so, so you, you know that, but there's only so many, when you advertise out, the people who are gonna be mobile for school choice have already started mobilizing. 
you know, they mobilized a while back. Yeah, so Frontier's you in went, a good, okay. they're in a good location too. And you're it's great traffic. traffic and you're, right, you're 91, anybody working yeah. south is yeah. going through here. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I'd like to think we do have a good product too, but you know, that's. So, so, they, you, so, so you're, you're saying they would have done it already. What's that? They would have done it already. It's not, you're not gonna, if you most, ramped up your I'll be honest, most school choice that you get in a ninth grade is either someone looking for a fresh start, something didn't work in a particular district, or they're new to an area and they found, they said, oh, I was told we should go come to this district. Right. You know what I mean? So it's usually there's something, um, you know, people are gonna try to get in middle school if they can't, you know, if, they can, if they're gonna, if they have the means, I mean, school choice is difficult because they have to get the transportation. They're gonna have the ability to have, you know, folks and yeah. jobs that can do that. You um, want that kind of thing. And then, I mean, we have kids who take the bus every day, yeah. you know, and that's a, the public bus, which is yeah, not just, just the other bus. The There's people taking the yellow bus. We don't have that many people those aren't. Yeah. yeah, you know, but it make that commitment, and that's a that's a testament too. But okay. so we have um, it looks like we have somewhere around 50, 57 of our students from Wakeley at Frontier, and um, so that gives us that we're looking at about eighteen thousand um, dollars per student to educate them at Frontier. Um, obviously your job is to get them in and get them out the door so that they're successful in life. But what, how, do we, how, do, how do we look at success? How do you look at success? Because um, we're paying, the way I see it, we're paying for success. We're not paying for, um, you know, to put butts in seats and mm -hmm. Let them hang out for four or six years. We're paying for success. Right. So tell me what success is, or give me an idea of what you think it should be or looks like. Um, the success of a public school system like this is to have as many door options open to a graduate as possible. Okay. You know, some graduates are going to shut doors, and some are going to open up more doors. You know, we can look at where we're sending to kids to two and four year colleges. That means we give them options. But there are some students, you know, and those are right now, um, I don't want to rattle off the wrong number, but we're in the high 70s, the low 80% going to a two and four year college. It goes up and down slightly depending on class. Because you remember, your average class is 100. So you're really talking about 100 kids. You know, your good two thirds, um, or uh, three, three quarters rather, are, gonna, are going on to further education, which is meaning that they're We've done something right in that, in yeah. that kind of thing. We also are looking at where are the other trends. Are they going straight to workforce? Some decide to travel. Some go military. You know, those are the other kind of options. You know, that kind of thing. Um, you're also looking at you know your dropout rates. You know, where have we failed? And then we look at why. Um, you know, on that particular thing. So I mean, those are all the different kind of looking at test scores. You know, from standardized test scores and that kind of stuff. How are we meet in the mark? Are we above the state average? You know those kind of things, and then addressing those things. So those are all the kind of where success because you can put everything in line. And I've seen kids walk out the door with you know very high GPAs and not want to go to a four-year college, or family dynamics don't they can't afford a four-year college, and that's not what's in the cards, or they don't want to do that right away, or they you know they want to work in a family, and that's you know statistically one person could say that you know you weren't successful there, but we gave them the options, and so looking at acceptance rates and where they're getting into school. What percentage are getting accepted to? Because we also, have, you know, you look at our list of the amount of students that go to UMass, and then you should also look at the list of the amount of students where they got accepted elsewhere, yep. and then chose UMass because it's financially what they sure. what they can do. And so, you know, it's kind of you know, it's one of those kind of mixed things. And then the question is, the follow up question that you're going to ask is, what is the success rate after they leave? You know, and that is a that's a, that's a far more difficult one. We tried to do a survey a few years back to to get didn't get a lot of feedback on it in a class that size, you really need how over 50%. Success. Yeah, how do you, you know, how do you judge success? You know, someone's happy living in a, you know, True. you know, that kind of thing versus making 100,000 and unhappy, you know, I don't know, you know, so, but, but right. seeing how they did, they get through their four years of school and that kind of stuff. And the state's doing more job, more on trying to help find those kind of data out as well by tracking the students after they go on to college. So that would that be helpful. I know that's a moving target, and it's, it's a difficult thing to put your arm around or your hands around. What I what I like to see, I, I, as a taxpayer, and it's we don't see it, it doesn't come out that you have you meaning the 
administration, uh, boards and whatnot, um, you have some idea of um, measurement of parameters that lead to success. So we sh should be, now I know the, um, the honor roll gets published in the paper, but do we see what percentage, in other words, keeping a, uh, a report card on your own accomplishments within the school, percentage of kids that make, that are enrolled in AP, percentage of kids that make the honor roll, year after year after year, so we can look at it percentage-wise. Mm -hmm. Kids that get accepted to four-year schools. Um, and uh, just so that there is, th th there's something you can put your arm around to say, um, this is what we're doing this year. This is what we did last year. And I think the taxpaying public, because this is the biggest thing in the budget, really deserves that kind of a view as to, and whoever's looking at it is gonna look at it in their own way. Mm -hmm. And there are gonna be some that don't think it's worth the paper it's on, but I think generally over time that you'll be able to look at those things, because it has to be something. There's gotta be something to put your hands on. What I will send you, I'll send you everyone here, the, we have something called the guidance report, and they kind of basically tell me what the seniors are doing, where they got accepted, where they're yeah. going. Um, and the general statistics, we get that every year. It's, shared, it's a public document, it's shared, yeah. it's shared, it's shared at the school committee. But I'll send last year's out just as an idea to, just so you, you know, yeah. in your, you're not having any elevator conversations at Whaley, but if you're having, you know, whatever conversations that is, you can say, oh, this is what's going on there. And, and, and then I can also look at and see about those other things. Because I know we also create a, when students apply to another school, we, from, from high school to college, we give a, Part of the, the packet from the school that talks about a lot of those percentages because yeah. they're scoring so they know when the students are ranked what are they ranked against and what yeah. they have what they, based on what do they did what do they have access to do you know so it kind of shows that whole um i don't think the exact name of it but it's the it's the again it's the it's resume of the schools that you know it yeah. and you're inside the walls and everybody in the walls probably knows it yeah. but everybody outside the walls is paying for what's in there and I think they should know it too, Mark. The other kind of question I'm curious about, and I'm guessing you haven't done the analysis because I don't think it's probably easy. We just talked about Wayville Elementary. Do we ever have to do an analysis of where the, the, the inputs are from each of the four towns into Frontier and where, they're, where that division is going? So what percentage of the weight we students that are at Frontier now go on to four-year or two-year as opposed to the other schools so we have, have a sense of the quality that our pipeline is providing to Frontier. So we do an analysis, so that's a difficult one because what you're talking about is SES or social economic status of students based on whether or not they go to a two or four years college. So I may score higher on my SATs and in all my classes, but I'm going to be going to a two-year college because I can't afford the four-year college. Or, right. And, you know, those kind of things. So that becomes difficult. We do look at MCAT scores, which is a, a to, to see where the schools are aligning in, you know, how the top students are doing versus, and then how they transition into middle school. Because the idea is, and this is one thing that's different about Frontier than other regional districts. Not a lot of regional districts that are something like this, but they're, they're Frontier has worked as, and this is well, well before me, okay, where they have worked together, the, all the elementaries have worked together to create the same product so that you don't go in the first day of seventh grade, oh, you're from this town, I can tell right now by the way you write. Or, I, you know, I, we just did the pre-math test and you're clearly from this town, it, you know, that kind of stuff. And they've worked hard to make sure that, you know, everybody is being held up to the highest standard and then and, and tested, and, and the testing is showing that. So. I think that's more important is when you're looking at test scores rather than where they're going. Oh, yeah. And we do look at that. So we do look at that. We don't look at it. As my example, but it could be test scores. We could. SAT scores. The more and more that the state is collecting on data, it probably wouldn't take a whole lot of manipulating to figure out based on address 
I could pull up, you know, where are the kids, how many kids are, you know, how many kids from Waitley percentage-wise are taking AP courses? How many kids in, how many kids in, in vice versa, how many kids in Waitley require special ed youth services? You know, those kind of things and, and looking at trends there. You know? I think that would be fascinating because then we can then assess how sure. our feeder is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, because I know a few years ago, Waitley was losing, Waitley Elementary was losing students to the other three town elementary schools and, and Hatfield as well because of some dynamics that were going on at Waitley Elementary and it wasn't good. And, and now I, I think the world of the Waitley principal yeah. and I don't think those trends exist anymore. So it, it's just interesting to see how how that plays out when you get to the, because it's, it's the K-12 out, but it's not just the 7-12 out. All right, just uh, one last, the uh, sort of the elephant in the room kind of thing is uh, we love the increase in a way, 2.84. 2 um, but if you look at historically, and that was prior to your administration, um, we saw many, many years of very low income, very low income, which is 1.2, 2.3. .2 and then all of a sudden, the other shoe dropped, which is that the maintenance of that building had been overlooked in many different areas. And we had to pass, you know, a special vote on town Florida to get the monies to fix it. Sure. So, is 2.84 realistic for the building maintenance as well? So, you, I think you'd always spend more on maintenance. You know, we're always, I mean, you're, you have a 20-year-old building, there's always something breaking, there's always something that's to be deferred and putting onto a list, you know. Um, and I think when you're looking at, you know, you're looking at Wheelie's actually the, it has the toughest assessment out of all the towns this year. I don't think we're able to see the, all, all of them. So, you know, um, but it's tough, but it's not as tough as some towns have had. And it's probably because that. of the increase. Right, and it's because but of the increase. And, and it's also looking at the 13 factors, and so somewhere somebody made more money in your town. Right. You know, so you got more income coming in. Yeah, it was spread. It was spread. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, Five jobs. But at the same time, we're doing, I think, and you know, Greg can jump in on this. I'll put you on the spot, Greg, because he's on the, the capital improvement um, committee for that, is that we're doing a better job of lining up what's broken and what needs to be fixed. And you're, you're seeing it for the first time is, you know, I just said to the select board, the um, the use of E&D really outlined. Before it was kind of hit and miss here and there. Now we're kind of lining up that these are the projects in the wings that are waiting and we're kind of moving it forward. And the loan that, you know, actually won't, isn't going in on this fiscal year, it's going in the following fiscal year. Um, you know, basically it's hitting everything, the, the, I call it, I'm calling it the big six now, the big six projects, six projects that are above $100,000. That you know, that you really can't. That's not deferred maintenance. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, maybe it could slow down one of those problems, but those problems are going to come in a twenty. Now to, we're looking closer to twenty-five year old than a twenty year old. Building. So I mean, we're going to fix those things and, and hit that building moving forward. So when you ask the question, could we do more with the maintenance money? Um, I'm asking for it different ways, though. So you know, I'm asking for a warrant. I say I, and really it's a school committee, but I'm representing them. Um, is, is asking for a warrant is another way of doing it. So we can increase the operating budget or we can kind of piecemeal and I think it gives towns feeling like they have a control on what's being what's being done and seeing what's being done. Well, they can done. see what's being done and they can put their finger on it. Right, and they can yeah. see this is right. where that money's going, okay, that kind of thing. When they, you know, um, when you talked about the gym floor, when you walk in the frontier next year, if, you know, barring that they, I don't get stopped by the, the select boards on the, using E and D, the new floor will be put in, new paint, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's overdue, obviously, um, but you'll see it. You'll see it, this is my tax money at work. Where, yeah. whereas if you put it, some of those things in a, you know, it's a lot easier for me to make increase the budget. I'll tell you that right now. If I increase maintenance budget to 100,000, take care of those problems, and not have to do all the legwork to four towns. Yeah. But I think where we are right now, maybe we'll change that position five years down the road. But the creating of this capital committee was to create transparency on the repairs, what's going on. Um, and the capital committee's even overseeing the, you know, we're starting to track, um, you know, we got a designer now, we're working on the contract for that right now. Um, so there's gonna be members from the town government, not just school committee, but you know, kind of overseeing that. And I think that's the, how I'm looking at it is to rebuild the trust. I don't know where the trust got broken, but to rebuild the trust that it's, it's the it's the regional school is that town school and not that separate entity that collected money from the towns for many, many years. 
years. And I know that I hear the, I hear the, the lines that I'm asking. And so that's what I want to try to say. You know it's coming, this is what it's for, there's no, we didn't ask for this, then buy this, you know, ask for a four to buy a whatever. So you know. when's the track going to be? So right now, um, we just interviewed um, uh, engineer, uh, architect, designers for it. We selected one. I'm in the process of negotiating that contract. So I've actually, it's in front of the school council right now. So the problem is that we learned by going through this is that the bidding, getting the plans in place and the bidding in place, the window in which tracks are done in New England, that bidding has already taken place for all the other tracks in New England. And there's only so many companies there's, some, there's a lot of companies that lay the foundation. There's only so many companies that lay the actual track. There's, they say there's three major companies that do that, and you've got to get on their calendar. And so we may have missed that window. So that may actually take us to the following year. And I'll let the towns know, obviously, because that's going to change when the biggest hit of the loan is going to take place. Is that the six hundred thousand dollar track? So that's you know. Um, so this not again. So we're not going after an FY twenty one. There's no. We're not starting that loan yet. So there'll be no assessments like that. We're looking for the problem. So then it'll be the year after that for the roof and then so on and so forth. So yeah, roof is probably going to be last. Um, the one after that, we're right now also looking at the parking lot um, as well as um, carpet and HVAC is also happening at the same time. So we're actually moving a little bit faster on some of these. That I thought it was going to be like maybe two a year, but we're getting the more information we're getting in that we're going to be able to kind of move forward. Right, so. And that climbing wall is going in when? And then we'll get that climbing wall. that will be like just three heads. <laughs> Holy cow! Holy mackerel! There goes that cat. Go. All right. Yeah. Terrific. It's also the climbing wall is like the bleachers when it's closed. Yeah. You see the kids yeah. climb that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put them outside against the building. <laughs> Any other further questions, comments, thoughts? We want to thank you for coming this evening. We're through with Wait with Frontier Elementary and Waitley. Frontier Regional and Waverly Elementary, then easy for me to say. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next on the list is public health. Evening. Evening. How are you doing, Fred? Evening. Good. Okay, so hey Paul, should we let people know the plan with uh, tech? Franklin County Tech. I want to keep it a secret, Paul, but I'm glad yeah, to let them know. The cats on all right ahead. Um, they were not able to attend tonight, obviously, uh, but they were planning to attend the next finance the next joint budget um, meeting on March 10th. While we're talking about um, interruptions in schedule, um, do we know if um, the police budget will be available any time I, before? I think tentatively we'll be discussing it March 10th. Okay. Uh, well, well, we'll have our meeting uh, with Jim on Wednesday. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. So. And, um, I don't know if 100% will be settled. We should make some progress. Yeah. Okay. So that's still a maybe. Um, and Tri Town Beach, will they be coming to the March 10th meeting? Um, they have been invited. Okay. Um, I received a budget um, this afternoon, actually. Then um, I forwarded. Uh, they have a meeting tomorrow night from the Tri Town Beach district. The first one that I've seen posted in a long time um, okay. but I will I will ask them remind them again that we've asked the representative to attend the meeting right uh, okay they've already been requested once and shared the thoughts of, of the select board and the finance committee as to where you lie in terms of supporting the budget if, if you don't get the time all right so we have a presenter let's get back to the let's get back to the health the health of Waitley. Okay, what can you tell us, Fran? What should, what should just... What, what budget do you want first? Are we doing all of them? All of them. Um, we'll do them one at a time. Right? Yeah. I'm sorry. Can we do the board of health first? Yeah. Yes. That's pretty easy. Yes. No change. Like that. <coughs> okay. 
That's good. Does the board of health ever have general expenses? Uh, occasionally we do the mailing. And memberships. Health uh, agent, Foothills Health District. Chris, yeah. No, this is a um, proposed increase largely due to uh, some line items, namely uh, the raise for the agents, 2% raise. And um, a few other miscellaneous items like telephone. Increased that by 800 bucks. And um, basically, it. a few other uh, they travel budget by uh, another 600 or 800 bucks. There's no sheet that has the details on it. Who is the health agent anyway? Who is the health agent? His name is Mark Bushy. Okay. He works out of the Payne Bill office. And we don't have a detailed budget for for health. No. <clears throat> what do we receive for nineteen thousand dollars a year? You have the equivalent of a full-time agent. It's not here full-time, obviously, but a sharing health agent. So the four towns that are in the Foothills district. His responsibility would be to oversee what? Everything that needs to be enforced. Title five, well reg, anything that has a permit to make a food, food inspections, anything like that. He's our agent. Basically, everybody on the board, the board health works, so he can't do those things during the day. Gotcha. So we hire a professional. And yeah. that's the reason for the foothills of the district. So he would go to restaurants in town and schools, look at schools. Okay. Senior center. Yeah. Senior center. Yeah. Well, not the senior center. Because that's Deerfield. Senior center is Deerfield. Deerfield, Deerfield, Deerfield right. <laughs> but if we had one, it would. Yeah. If you had. Okay. Right. I keep thinking. They are healthy. As a cooperative. Yeah. Right. Okay. Things are moving. So not. District, but, yeah. So, um, yeah. That, that All right, let's get to some of the more. Uh, how, about, how about solid waste? You want to do the Franklin County solid waste management district? That's easier. Do that. Is that on there? Yes, yeah. okay. it's in the back. It's the last page. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So, I didn't go to the meeting where it was voted by the board. Franklin County Solid Waste Management District, which we are part of, and it saves us a lot of money. Voted to increase the assessments to cover um, a little bit more of the administrative overhead from 65 to 70 percent. Because it's my understanding that one of the bigger programs that had overhead was an administrative revenue source. The sludge program is no longer so mm -hmm. in order to compensate for that it's going to be increasing the systems. And it's for way later eight hundred seventy two dollars Any questions? On that? No? You're good? Okay. What's next, Frank? I got solid waste. What do you okay. Mean? Solid waste. That's, <laughs> that's what we got. It's very pro. Are there any other budgets you want to talk about? Well, household hazardous waste is 1200 Yeah. That's the same one. So, um, solid waste. Big problems because, as you've read, if you haven't read, you should know. Remember I asked, <laughs> remember I asked you last year then if it was going to go up? 
That's right. Yeah. Well, he said it. It is going to change. And it changed big time. So the biggest change in uh, why the request has gone up. And this is by no means any, in any fashion a realistic budget because we have no numbers. Except for a number of items. <coughs> but we don't know what the hall cost is going to be. Bids are not, have not yet really been gone out. And it won't be in until March. So biggest item is obviously the increase in recycling costs. It went from zero to 93.50 a ton. That's for everybody, everywhere in the states. No way around it. We're lucky that we have a MRF, that we can send them somewhere, and that we're a dual stream that gets our products, our recycled products, gets a uh, higher price. Can you say which line of this budget oh. represents the increase in that recycling cost? For recycling to feed. So it was no longer, it was not for Oh, okay, it just wasn't there, so that's why I did it. Yeah, so 9,727.4, which is most of the increase. Okay, that's but I would point out, especially to the people watching on FCAP, yeah. that if you add up the hauling, compacting, and tipping fees for trash, and you add up, even with the increase, mm -hmm. the hauling uh, container and tipping fees for recycling, it's a it's only, it takes, well, 17K for recycling, 27K for, oh, yeah. for what you toss. So what people, people are all Keep upset about how it's gonna cost me to recycle, so <coughs> I'm not gonna do it. No, it seems like that's the next sentence, but I want people to know, it's still cheaper to recycle, even with these extra fees. Way cheaper. It's way cheaper. <coughs> sure. Um, way cheaper. So that's. The recycling you pay by the ton? Yeah. yeah. But so, there's, uh, we're, as you may know, we used to get paid for the right. Yep. We're still going to get paid by the time. It's going to be less. So even though we're the budget has it in there for the full amount, we're going to get an amount back. Right now, it depends on the market. So the average market value has been around twenty twenty five dollars per ton. So we'll get that back if it stays that way. So every ton we ship, we're still going to get some money. So keep recycling. <laughs> And compost. We're doing a pretty good job on it. It's like a compost. So I don't want to let um, this, the rumors about uh, recycling demise uh, affect weekly residents because we have to still have that option. Nothing's really going to change at the transfer station. We just have to pay. You know. But it's going to be, like I said, there'll be some money coming back. And our intent is probably to raise some fees on the back. Fees on bags. Yeah. yeah. Any thought about stickers or? Well, we have stickers. Oh, we, so oh, we, we do. use the stickers for larger non-weekly bags, and we charge a buck more already for those. So we'll probably up the that fee. Awesome. So larger non-weekly bags brought to the transfer station. The person gives the attendant what? Four bucks. Four dollars. Uh, three dollars right now. Three dollars. What? Three dollars. The, and what? What does that look like in terms of? Um, so it's like sen essentially you got a revolving fund. Yeah, except it's, it doesn't clearly cover the budget, but it covers. We make around twenty-eight, twenty-eight and a half thousand dollars in bag fees. Okay. So. And so that's just bag fees. That's all bags. All bags and weightly bags, non-weightly bags. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So stickers and bags. Yeah. Um, so non-weightly bags could be anything. Four, could be anything. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're not going to except for a truck, it's a lot of size bag, but uh, um, like a contractor bag, plastic contractor bag. Yeah. Some storage drinks that will charge more. So, but you have to have a, you pay for a sticker to use those. Yeah. Exactly. That's the only difference. Is yeah. Yeah. It's a a, it's usually it's a, a contractor size bag. Okay. Yeah. Heavy duty. Or anything in between our bag and the pound trash bag and something yeah. else. So anything larger. Okay. So people pay for what they're 
generating. And that's, that's, that's the idea behind the pay per bag program. Generate more trash, you got paid more. Right. So, um, so that's the thought is we'll probably up the fees on those bags. How realistic is this number for that it's going up at, or it's not? Is this on the low side? Is 15,000? Uh, it's the numbers that uh, we see is 20%. Yeah. So just a toss out number okay. figure that I, so I this could be a little less. This, this is the worst case scenario, I hope, from our hauler. Um, I think we're going to come under that. Okay. But that's, um, I put it in there because we might get there. Yeah. So um, I'm hoping, again, if the money that comes back in, mm -hmm. increase in the <coughs> bag. So we're looking at bag increase in the bag fee? Yeah. Well, we've thought of several other options. How many bags do you use a year? About 14,000. Who has a calculator? Okay. That makes 28, 28 and a half. So, two bucks a bag. Yeah. But if we increase? We increase it by a dollar to make about 14,000 more. Okay. And, and when we increase the bag, size, bag fee, will, this, will the bag go back to the larger bag size that? went down because no. <laughs> so we got the certainly five bags by the twenty-five thousands. but we got those bags for a while until okay. we went out. when was the last time it was increased hmm? when was the last time the bag fee was increased 25 years ago yeah it's a long time <laughs> so so friends it's kind of overdue yeah. my question is I, I totally understand the impact on recycling because of demand in, in, in China and we don't sanitize our, a lot of, a lot of reasons. But mm -hmm. I still, I'm, I'm wondering why hauling, compacting, contain, all the fees are going up to above 20% <coughs> outside of the recycling. And I'm, well, and I'm wondering why. I don't know that. Because they can. Yeah. This is just, <laughs> that's, I don't know that's that. why. Well, the re two reasons, several <laughs> reasons. There are, there are no landfills in the state anymore. Basically. They're all closed, right? Yeah, so our trash gets shipped to Holyoke right now and then shipped west. Don't tell them, New York or Ohio or someplace for disposal. So that costs money. But, <laughs> and there aren't very many places you can even take it in the state to get it shipped someplace. There's a burner option, uh, incinerator, which we're looking at for tip fees. See if that's something. But they're all going to be in the same ballpark, and you just don't have a lot of options. So we're lucky we're near oil. So that yeah. and it's <laughs> also the conflict for consolidating. You have several big companies that run the transfer station that ex still exists, and and or the incinerator. So you don't have a lot of. <laughs> what, is it, what does it incinerate? Everything. Mm, not supposed to recycle. Not supposed to incinerate recycle. So everything you buy. But it will. It will incinerate recyclables that are oh. dirty. Yeah. 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 Oh, why Which is a lot. Why would you do it? Yeah. Yeah. It's the law. I mean, recycling is still the law. Right. Right. Okay, uh, the people that recycle stuff there today don't pay any kind of fee at all. Right. Right. And they're going to be, town is going to be paying for that now. We're not making money. Okay. Yeah. In so, a sense, the town though we always pay because the hall is more cost. Yeah. Okay. There, so. so anybody from anywhere can come and recycle. And no. Now, anyone from Wakey. No. Anywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> and well, we do residents true. come and cycle right. and recycle. And we're, the I've Wakey residents are going to pay that additional fee for the recycling. Whereas the... The uh, trash ones, you go by the bag, and, and people buy the bag and, and they recycle mm -hmm. the, for 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 their their uh, the amount that they re that they uh, have in trash. I've also seen these bigger black bags that are that are coming to town from contractors. The truck has a contractor sign on it, and the mm -hmm. guy is dumping three mm -hmm. or four mm -hmm. of these contractor large large bags for the 350 into the trash. That, that should not be allowed. It should be for residential use only. Residential trash, it not is. construction trash. It no, is. I've seen I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. Are they getting charged for that? It's only the 350 a bag. 
for the for a, they throw it in the trash. Anybody contractors for from really Deerfield, far, yeah. yeah, from for Deerfield, I well, see come. I'd say that's they an do exception. That. Uh, I think it should be the the recycling and the trash should be for Whateley residents only. And, and maybe to control that, you need some maybe some kind of sticker fee, so the recycling people are paying something, and then the trash people are, are paying by the bag. Even right. even if the contractor is from Deerfield or someplace else, do we know if it's a Whateley project? It doesn't matter. They they should dispose of their construction debris. There's places to do that, and if they do, if they can't afford it, then they should be charging the the mm -hmm. homeowner or whoever they're doing work for an extra charge to do that. Yeah, they I should be in with the town stuff. It, it's There's true. no reason for but that. But we have uh, we have the residents list that we have, and, yeah. and people recognize if you're from Whaley or not. Right. So the transfer station attendants usually know, particularly Regina, if they live in town but, but, or not. And so if there's somebody who shows up who doesn't live in town, they know they don't let them. They're not supposed to let them. But there's still residents. Happen. There's residents that are contractors in town that. Yeah, it's could, uh, could dump there, and uh, it's okay if they use a recycling. Well, it was much more <laughs> okay than it's going to be, but um, I'd say that's an exception. Okay, but if you increase so, the bag, the bag fee you're looking for the uh, the people that bring trash there to pay for the recycling. Yeah, I, I, I think there should be some some fee for the recycling. Yeah, but right now, I, 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 I want to push back on that because we don't want to, dis we don't want to have a dis a We just put it in a bag, right? No, no we don't want to disincentivize that's the people to recycle yeah. as opposed to trash. Yeah. Well, we to want recycle. people to recycle. Yeah. And right but, now, but, there's but, not enough people who recycle, period, anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, but it could be, to Fred's point, it, point, it could be a free sticker. That's fine. As, yeah. as long as there's not a they've cost got the they got the list well, of sticker, who lives in town. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you right. got a sticker. As long as not, there's not a cost to that sticker. Right? Well, we, we, right. we, we debated whether to go, with, to go with a permit, which a lot of towns, well, not a lot of towns, but a handful of Franklin County towns have, and charging 25 bucks or something like that. It's not a lot of money. But um, said uh, that somebody's going to have to administer that. So there is an administrative cost, probably doing so some kind of of permit. So. No, no, but who's, where are they going to buy it? Yeah. Well, the same yeah. place you buy your trash bags. Yeah. You yeah. tend it, right? You tend it. Yeah. That, yeah, you could, but it should, probably they want to buy it, you know, at some point early in the year, so they have their permit or something. Right. That could be well, a permit. Yeah, yeah, my my understanding yeah. is that mm -hmm. the, the transfer station is open early in the year. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I guess what, I, what I'm hearing, and maybe this is kind of what, what, yeah, what, what Fred is saying, this is a good idea. Th there are yeah. times when I No charge, to, no right. charge sticker. But I, yeah. get, I guess the bigger thing that I hope you're hearing yeah. is because it's what I'm hearing and what it, sometimes I'm seeing when I'm at the transfer station is um, I was there once, and this is the exception, not the rule. Mm -hmm. I was there once, and I was the only person who was putting trash in there that had a weekly bag. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is just putting bags in and not paying. Okay. And what I've you that, sure? yes, I in, in standing in for time attendance, and I mentioned it to the attendant who was not Regina, yeah. um, and they said, well, you know, and yeah. I've seen it too. And yeah. so, no, so, seen so, it. so, I think that has to stop because enough mm -hmm. people have seen that happening that they're going to feel like the system is unfair, mm -hmm. even when mm -hmm. that one day I saw it. But then the other day when I was there collecting signatures, there was nobody there from any other town. Every single person signed my Waitley papers. And, and it, that, I think, is much more typical. Um, but just when that happens, just once or twice, and people see that, that's the thing you remember instead of the 99 times that you go there and everybody is there from Waitley. There was a time, to, to Joyce's point, and it was probably, it was right after we had a sea change in staffing at the transfer station probably <laughs> 15 years ago now. Yeah. And the policy was implemented where you weren't allowed to throw trash into that receptacle unless it was in a Waitley trash bag. Right. If that meant yeah. you took your black bag and you put it into a Waitley trash bag yep. and you just purchased yeah, that, that was the way it works. And, and that's the only way to truly do to monitor inventory anyway because if I just give you two bucks and I'm gonna throw it in, and, mm -hmm. and you can't monitor that. There's so the no inventory monitor. Right. Right. So the to have a policy, well, uh, yeah, or something, but yeah, something. 
Yeah, but again, the, the size of that bag can vary. I mean, you, what, what's the what's the black bag size going to be? I don't. I, I just so don't how much know you can lift. why. <laughs> but it's going to you know. Fifty five or heavy. You know. Yeah. Why we are allowing something outside of what he just described? Why why did it come in that that we can put non weightly bags in there? Just pay a little more. Yeah. Get two right. weightly bags. Put all your crap in there, and, and that, so yeah, I don't know do that. But there must have been something well, that forced just, that change. Then you're doubling the plastic. Yeah. So you want to attach it to the more plastic that we're but, adding. Well, yeah. you can't okay. have inventory control. control is really important. Free sticker for residents might be. A, we haven't thought of that, but still, somebody's going to have to administer. I, I just think we should, if, if something goes into the bin, trash, yeah. you should be in the bag. I do. Yeah. I, it's just I, easier. I absolutely agree. It's clear. And if I were an intended, that's what I would want. Because and it would it's safer more, for me. It would force more recycling because they're smaller. Right. Yeah. That's, that's right. Think about why would you want a bigger bag to begin with? Are you hiding stuff in there that you want people to see? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, why a big bag? Big. Other than it holds more and it weighs more. more. Yeah, it holds it's more, but, large, but it's 350 versus $2. Or versus four dollars, maybe if you're buying. As two. Bobby pointed out, that fifty-five gallon <laughs> black bag, that's going to put like three weighty bags in there. Yeah, made three. Really, okay. it's a convenience well, factor, and they can stay more in it. Yeah. And, so, and, and the, so the black bags thing. that you can buy have a drawstring tie at the top, yeah. and if that's what fits your garbage can in the garage, then it's yeah. true. Yeah, you know, there's. So it, I agree, doubling the plastic that goes in doesn't make sense, <clears> and I think the sticker system that you're talking about could work. But it might be that they're going to have to look at some of those big bags and say, that's, oh, sorry, that's two stickers. It's like the airport. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. There's more, yeah. Yeah. But, if it's but double again, the size. Yeah. Yeah. But, the, but I, th I think the fairness issue has to kind of get addressed. It's not a Whaley bag. Make it $5. <laughs> that would. That might get people to That would buy. get attention. Yeah. Well, you know, we could do that. Just raise the sticker fees instead of. Um, Right. Instead of buying a buck by yeah. yeah. What's the fee now on the sticker? What? Free. Free. Yeah. Free year? No. No, no, no. But there's no price, there's no cost for the actual sticker. You said there's a sticker in order to. Well, the sticker, we got to roll a sticker. Right. sticker That's for inventory control. So the sticker, so goes, on the sticker goes on the bag. The sticker goes on the bag no, no. because they don't want to double the plastic that you're putting in by putting that inside the weighted bag. So like you put that 55 gallon bag in those things. Well, it might be right. easiest just to up the price on the sticker to make that yeah. a little more incentive. To yeah. yeah. Or even if, if your bag is bigger than a weighted bag, two stickers. I would think you would need proof of residency to dump them. To do that, you go to sticker right here at the town offices from Lynn or whomever, then that can go on the car. And if the attendant doesn't see the sticker, leave. And then they have to buy the bags to dump the stuff into the trash. Yeah, well, Compact. if you have two cars, you, you have, trouble have one sticker. You have trouble putting it on cars. Other towns yeah. If you have two cars, Other towns then you bring your registration, it doesn't work. and you get two stickers. Yeah, that's what well, that's why they're free. Well, I've, I've seen that done before. Yeah, you keep up with that. Yeah. Well, I, as long as they're free, and Lynn doesn't, yeah. doesn't mind um, doing it, we can well, have something like that. I don't know. Who, the, know what's in front of us now? The escalating costs. Yeah, I think you got to get. I think you got to get somewhere. Yeah. It's a good time to raise the cost structure. Done it in 25 years. Yeah. No. So I think we would probably go with a higher sticker price and then see how much administrative detail is involved with a weekly sticker. So mm -hmm. I want to make it too burdensome. I mean, people are used to this. It seems to work. The bag fees, the bag revenue has pretty much stayed the same over the years. So the, the bags yeah. got smaller, so well, they, went, they got bigger, <laughs> then they got smaller. So how many stickers did you uh, use yeah, last year, or up to up to this last? I think we used a roll of maybe three thousand or partial. Roll. So 
partial roll of three thousand at three bucks a sticker. Like, how? What part? Then over, fourteen thousand. Is that like half of a three thousand sticker roll, or is this a quarter, uh, or ninety percent? But we do an inventory. Maybe. We do an inventory, and we, and we balance cash in versus stickers out, right? Yeah. yeah. But none of this is covering that total budget. Right. Oh. No, but but at least we know that the stickers being the, yeah. with a bag. If I have ten dollars, I know I sold five bags. I want to make sure that if I have fifteen dollars, I sold five stickers, and that's easy to and it's easy to to, to account for. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to make uh, money change too uh, cumbersome, like the change to fifty or something okay. like that. So. Mm -hmm. Be up it by dollar amounts. Well, yeah. In my view, I would think you want you would want to eliminate that entirely. The what? The exchange of funds at the transfer station. That's what I. Think. How do you do well, that? that How do you do that? Well, be. <laughs> well, you have. Well, you, you have something. You know, you buy bags in one spot. You buy stickers in one spot. Mm -hmm. You leave with your bags. You leave with your stickers, and then. That, yeah. Then you have control. Uh, right yeah. now, you know the control is. You know. I think you need somebody out there selling them. On you have some control. There's just more tipping fees, and that's what we're yeah, talking that's, about. Yeah, I mean, most of yeah. this is really going to be about the uh, you know, right. cost. Other, if we didn't have that item, it probably wouldn't be much of a budget change. So, yeah. um, right. Well, the no, problem okay. you've got the, you've now got recycling's now costing us, which it was not before. Yeah. And. We, but we don't want to discourage recycling, so to right. figure out how to mm -hmm. only yeah. keep our you know, weightly recycling in there, which is costing us, yeah. but not discourage it. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 That's right. So, it's easier to put it in a bag and throw it in the rubbish. Yeah. Well, I don't think we want to double the bag, double the plastic. No. We can make it um, with a uh, sticker field more persuasive. <laughs> yeah. Right. We don't want to just incentivize. No, 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 especially since we've had such a good rate. Everybody's been, yeah, that's right, everybody's been hearing, oh, no more recycling, so we don't want to change it too much of this. I mean, the thing I don't think I would recycle is glass. Yeah, well, down the line, we may be pulling glass out. Yeah, so I mean, that's a, so right now, we pull out all returnable stuff, which is an extra measure that we does almost yeah. exclusively. So we give it to the uh, um, that it's our place down there at uh, food bank service center. Yeah, not the food bank, right up the street down uh, on five and ten. Service net. Service net. Yes, sir. Yeah. And they take it. So we we get rid of a lot of stuff that normally would go in the recycling, and through them. Um, we're going to make a lot of money off it, but we don't lose money. So that's good. And it's less fish and less long. So that, between that and the compost, which is going down here, <laughs> the compost budget. So we, you know, it's a tough year for making uh, this work. Who gets, the, who gets the income from the metal? What's that? Behind that shed, all the metal that's dumped on the ground, who takes care of that? Uh, it's an issue for Keith and I uh, that's um, in the Solid Waste Committee. He's used to just have it and we had some local guy come by and pick it up because he's a uh, junk man. Junk man. Strap hey, George used to pick George. it up. And George, I don't know if he's feeling well or what's going on with him, but it just hasn't been regularly picking up. So there's no so, income from there. We don't get anything from him. No, we never have. So the only time, but we do the two bulky waste days, and which includes a, a metal. So we could rent a box, a box but it doesn't pay because by the time we don't get enough metal. So do we get income from the bulky waste day? I know you charge for items, but does that uh, cover the cost of the containers? No, well, we we charge, but it goes into the the processing of all that waste. So. But it covers the cost of the bulky waste day. Barely. Yeah, I mean, that's really back is sort of organized by the Solid Waste District, so we, we just host it, per se, and we get uh, the benefits of having them um, take items that, that we wouldn't be able to organize, like tires. In the woods, they would be in the woods. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's barbecue really, tanks, <coughs> all those odd things that we have no room for and can't, can't collect enough of. 
to redo the bulky waste days. And that's for anybody, not just Whaley residents, right? No, no just wholesale. Yeah. We 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 anybody in Franklin yeah. County. Okay. They have to sign. Right, because everyone's getting charged regardless. Yeah. No, but I think we'll uh, take this mark. So this budget, you know, I, I can't vouch this is going to be this budget until maybe end of March. We have better numbers on the whole cost, yeah. so it just could go down by this. <coughs> well, now we appreciate you. By a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. At least in the end of March, I think we'll have more solid. Yeah, it's <laughs> on the whole cost. She's. Well, what's happening is uh, they changed, They had to change the bid specs because there was a prevailing wage issue from $24 to $45 an hour. <laughs> $24 to $45? Yeah, it's a huge amount. So, yeah, it's a um, oh, whatever, okay. and that, that's being appealed because obviously that wage rate is skewed way out of whack for Western Mass. So, um, Jeez, that Finally, that should be a that should be a skewed rate for every place in Western Mass. Yeah, well, it is. is brutal. Yeah, it is. So, so until that gets straightened out, there's an appeal pending. I think next week that should get decided, and the bids will come in March. So we should know by the end of March. My only last question, and again, it's it's another what if on the budget you've already put together. Yeah, these numbers are based upon certain on Tonnage. Yeah. What if we miss? If we miss? <laughs> what if we don't have the Say that. anticipated tonnage and our overall fees per ton go up because we're not providing what we thought we would? I mean, the, it's an escalating cost no, based no. upon your, your tonnage. Yeah. No, the only escalating, the only bar and threshold is if enough towns sign on to the MRF. Right now. But if you say I'm going to give you ten times, I'm going to make up a number, ten times of recycling, mm -hmm. and they're going to give you X dollars no, no, as no, cost. No put if if well, you only hit five, nothing. they don't increase your. No, I thought no. No. I did too. So I I thought if you only had say twenty one loads and they no. wanted twenty, you needed twenty five, no. you would get hit with a higher fee no, because it was it was based no, on the no, the contract is you're bound to send it to the firm. That's the, the deal. If okay. you sign on to the roof contract, right. you can't the go go so, there and nowhere else. So if glass goes away, we don't get penalized for right. a lower tonnage. Right. We get paid. There's no well, that's they, cool. they well, right. I get that part, but it, it, that was sort of a Robin Hood kind of thing where we get our it's re, it increased cost, increased nah. money, but, but okay. no, but no, no it's, towns are too small to go for that kind of thing. Okay. Just, just, Alrighty. So, I did one more question. When would you anticipate a meeting, a decision on the fees? Like, if you're going to increase the debt? I think we're going to put it in the school tomorrow. <laughs> Actually. Okay. okay. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. We've already decided pretty much. Although we hadn't set the sticker fee yet. So, we might increase that. No, actually, didn't put in the exact numbers, just to note that they'll be going up. <laughs> do we know what July first? Mm -hmm. Do we know what percentage of town has curbside? Did pays for their own curbside as opposed to using the transfer station? It's hard to say. We can't even really no. say the number of households that you Waitley households that use the transfer station. We have no idea. Well, 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 we have a general it. idea. It's it's probably three hundred. You can go around and count all the, uh, the trash barrels out there. Oh yeah, a great yeah. idea. A few beers. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a kind of question. Unless you did, unless you had a sticker. Yes. Yeah, like well, if you have the sticker thing, then you could assess. It's right. Exactly. Yeah. Everyone yeah. had to have a sticker. And if it were known to, to use, use it. Course. Well, to, to use it. But then, then, then to you know, have yeah. yeah. they're not getting stickers. For example. Right. And yeah. we yeah. assume that they're. Mm -hmm. We could do a census like the senior center. Yeah. You could. You could. I, I think that's most local get that local businesses. Oh yeah. Like yeah. Really really cool. How many? Oh, well, <laughs> we want to keep the customers we have, obviously, because there sure. are other options. Sure. Are the other options after it's all. I think too. coffee and donuts on Saturday is that's the way to go. Well, you know, I'll tell you. We do a lot of if, beneficial things. If you want a jaw-dropping experience, <laughs> go up to Leverett to their transfer station because it is a community. It event. It is um, it is wonderful. So we should they take have, that trash there. They have they have, they have a lot of stuff. They have 
<laughs> really? Donuts and coffee. And what do they open? What are you doing there? <laughs> I was there a lot last year. There you go. He's up there for donuts and coffee. Uh, but it, it's 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 amazing. It is people hang out. There. No kid. No, they do. There's not, lot, there's not a lot going on. Like we, they hang out at the, at the transfer station on Saturday mornings. Okay. Board. Yeah, we could, we get pretty busy too, so we don't have a lot of hangout space. We got right, right exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So we ha we don't even yeah. own that's basically DPW yeah. property. Really and we get the little corner. We squeeze a lot of stuff in that little space. We don't really have any storage space. We don't have a lot of stuff like Eleven has. Maybe a little yeah. gazebo out back in the high school. Yeah. Well, this, this, what I'd like is to have the solar array power the transfer station. Yeah, I mean that contract comes up. There's some negotiations about huh. any future or solar things. Yeah, would have been the idea. But electricity is a small cost, relatively speaking. So okay, friend. Well, um, stay tuned. I guess if that's it, we'll wait to see what the end of March brings mm -hmm. and uh, what the final numbers look like. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you for coming in and leading Thanks. us in the discussion. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have a continuation. Yeah. 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 These two sit together anymore. Okay. So this one. We're going to break them up. You're going to have to get them between them. Okay. Big yeah. problem. I'm open. <laughs> um, okay. What do we have? We have a continuation of the capital project yeah, discussion. This Why don't you lead us in that? Well, this is going to be a sort of a continuing item that we're still waiting for the figures from the other bill that we requested. The previous bill. So it's about time exactly about. Wow. Um, so we seem to be getting working up to pull to give us the numbers. Right. Um, yeah, later. Um, and at, at some point here, we're going to make decisions about um, which capital projects are going to be funded and how they're going to be funded. Um, so it's, it's going to be a continued discussion. Um, I'm getting loads of pushback on the excavator from the constituents. You are? Why? I have a captive audience. No, but do they put what reason do they give you? Other they want it, they want to know just what we're looking for. And I think that's gonna be a bigger issue than you think. So as we move forward here, I think everybody got a copy of the capital plan last time. Um, it should be in the it should also be in the email from last meeting. You mean the one pager? No, nope, it's a uh, oh, the one bundle pager. Twenty twenty one to twenty thirty. Yeah. Um, what page? Well, worksheet three. Fiscal year two thousand twenty one. <coughs> so this is just yep, yep. ideas as to how uh, these projects could be funded if we wanted to fund them. So uh, maybe we can plan to talk about this in more detail. Uh, the meeting of March 10th. Um, other things that the finance committee wanted to discuss at some point was um, uh, stabilization accounts, whether we're moving money into stabilization accounts or out of stabilization accounts. Um, what else do we want to talk about? We need to talk about any appropriation of free cash to reduce the tax levy. That's typically in the past couple of years has been $200,000. So if we're looking about, it, we just need to keep that in the back of our minds as we talk about <coughs> and look at free cash balances, whether that's a goal or not a goal for this year. Um, so maybe we can have a, a more focused discussion at the, the March 10th meeting. Yeah, who's coming in on March 10th? Um, it's, it's what? Police, maybe. Uh, police, uh, so it's the administration. So it's the administrative budgets, health insurance will be me, Lynn, the assessor, hopefully the police will get Franklin Tech here. Um, Tritown, okay. Tritown, hopefully. 
Well, I'd like to have a meeting where we have a little more space to talk about the capital yeah. end of things. So it's not kind of jammed in at the end when we're all meeting out. Right. Yeah. You know, like, so got that um, sense tonight. Do we create a different meeting for capital? Because I know, for one, I won't be running the tents. So I don't know. That might not be a bad either. idea. It might not be a bad idea to have just a capital meeting. Yep. And then, um, and in fact, in that meeting, if there are, you know, maybe that's when Keith comes in and talks about the expenditure or and anyone else who has significant um, expenditures in the capital plan. Um, I think that's a good idea, John. We could also add capital stabilization to that conversation. Right. So, yeah, I think you can't treat those things as just uh, right. an addendum. Yeah. So, let's try to make a, let's try to you know, let's see. So, I mean, so what we have available in March is, so we have meetings scheduled for the 10th to the 24th. So, if we're sticking to Tuesdays, we have the 3rd, the 17th, or the 31st. 3rd, 17th, or 31st. 3rd's public hearing, right? So, 18th. Third is election day. So this March. Oh, yeah. Let's not do the third. I thought there was okay. So the seventeenth. I thought there was a school seventeen hearing. Yeah. I'll be on the fourth. What is it? What is it? Fourth. I thought there was yeah, one on the third and the fourth. Okay. Is there frontier? Yeah. Frontier is the seventeenth. Okay, and that's election day. The thirty-first is too close to town meeting. I mean, I, I, was think hoping, so. I was hoping we would have the finance so. committee wrapped up by the. Yeah, I think there's like a meeting on the seventh here. I see. Yeah, it's looking like that would be the final one. Yeah, yeah you can have it. What? Was the seventeenth and the thirty-first. Yeah. Right. So the thirty-first would work for you. I mean, it doesn't sound like Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Right. What's that again? I, I was saying the 31st is so Joyce could be here. I, I, I don't have a problem with that as long as the you think that's, I mean. You've got, you got the 24th set up for the for votes on things. Right. We have to bump that back to the 31st. Yeah. Right. So the 24th would be the discussion and then. The, you want to replace? We have to add. Well, if the 24th, I don't have my calendar. Um, so if so if the twenty fourth um, was designated for final vote, is yeah. that right? right? Okay. So Why don't we s switch that to the thirty first, and in the twenty fourth, put the capital. Yep. How's that? Does that work for the group? Or? I think that's a good decision. Okay. So there is a meeting on the twenty fourth. Yep. And now there's also one on. Yeah. 6 p.m. Good. Yeah. And there's not one on the 7th of, of April. 7th is hopefully not. Right. So, so that was the all, emergency. That was the emergency. When we all come together and yeah. Yeah. everybody yeah. Okay. is on the same yeah. page. Yeah. Okay. Um, or we agree to just whatever happens. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Are we good? Any final thoughts, comments? Do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.